hello everyone and welcome to my channel i'm excited to have you here because starting from today we will dive deep into essential techniques and practical skills for creating accurate landslide susceptibility maps in this series we will explore the key factors that influence landslide susceptibility including slope elevation aspect LS factor or slope length and steepness, drainage density, proximity to road and river, soil type, rainfall patterns, geological features, and uh, slope curvature. Whether you are a beginner or looking for refine your skill, this episode will equip you with the knowledge to make a data-driven decision in landslide mapping. If you are find this content helpful, please don't forget to like this video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Your support helps me to create more valuable content for you. Let's get started on this journey together by defining the basic concepts of landslide. As you know, landslide is a movement of a mass of rocks, earth or debris down stock due to a gravitational force and landslides are triggered by several natural and human induced factors like heavy rainfall, earthquake, volcanic activity, deforestation or construction activities. For instance, if a certain area have uh, heavy amount of rainfall or the existence of earthquake or volcanic activity, the area is disrupted and uh, landslide becomes very common. The result can be devastating causes of damage to the properties, uh, infrastructure, as well as uh, loss of life. There are different types of landslide. Uh, the first the type of landslide is rockfall. This is large rocks break away uh, from a cliff and it can be caused by human use or natural factors and it can be induced by weathering crosses so it bounces down to uh, the lower slope. The other type of landslide is debris flow. This is a unique type of land slide and it is a fast moving flow with a mixed materials like soil, rock and water. Uh, so such type of landslide is known as debris flow. The third one is, is also slump. Slump is uh, different from debris flow. Uh, it is slow in nature and rotational movement of large mass of earth or rock along the curved surface. There are also creep and uh, translational slide. Uh, such type of landslide have its own causes. The major causes can be rainfall, heavy rainfall, or the seismic activity shaking of earth cube. Uh, the other is human activities like deforestation, mining, quarry, road construction, and poor uh, planning of urbanization. All this can destabilize the slope and the volcanic activity can also cause landslide. So uh, if a landslide is a natural phenomena which can be induced by a natural factor or uh, human made, we have the potential to prevent this landslide and from this mechanism, the first one is having landslide susceptibility map using GIS and remote sensing technique is very fundamental. And after having or identifying hotspot areas for uh, such landslide area, we can plan for reforestation, afforestation, slope engineering, and drainage system. So uh, the main concern for this uh, video is we try to compute variables that uh, help us to compute landslide mapping. We have uh, about 30 or uh, 40 criteria to map landslide mapping and we have uh, classes and their weight and finally we come up with landslide susceptibility mapping for a certain area. So let's get started with a practical aspect. For uh, this practical exercise I do have a national data set and I do have area of interest to work with a landslide. 
So you can use ArcGIS, Quantum GIS, or ArcGIS Pro. For the sake of this exercise, I would like to use a mixed software. Uh, I try to show you some parameters are generated by ArcGIS Pro, some are Saga GIS. I'll show you with a mixed way. For uh, today, let me show you uh, by using ArcGIS Pro. So the first step that we are going to do is we need to identify our area of interest and we uh, should to uh, have the data set that we have uh, tried to use. So let's uh, start with elevation. So to compute elevation, we need to have a digital elevation model and the shape file for our area of interest. Let's add to our ArcGIS Pro. As you know, first of all, you need to open your ArcGIS Pro and go to Map. From Map, there are the alternative methods to add our data set and select our data. So you need to uh, understand where your data set is uh, clearly set or saved. In my case, I do have uh, e drive. Here from e drive, I have a national data set. This folder contains a national data set of different data. So I like to use a digital elevation model for, of 20 meters spatial resolution. Click here. Then this is the data set that I have used to generate elevation of my area of interest. And the next step that uh, I need is uh, I need to clip out and uh, I need to have a shape file. So in my case, let me get back again to a drive and um, there is a landslide risk folder within this. I do have two administrative waterdas. Let me use Kaokosha. This is the administrative waterda which is found in the past of Ethiopia. This is a waterda shape file and I need to add to the table of content. Finally, let me have a look at the administrative boundary of the Wurada. Go to the data set and right click and uh, select zoom to layer to uh, clearly depict the administrative boundary. So uh, for this practical exercise, I would like to generate input data sets for this administrative Wurada and I will start to generate the elevation map of this administrative borada called Kaukusha. So let me make a hollow, double click here to make hollow my data set or you can right click, go to property, I mean uh, go to symbology because we need to uh, take go to symbology from symbology here uh, you can click uh, double click here and select the hollow one automatically the administrative boundary is converted to hollow so the first and the most important step that we are going to do is we need to clip out based on our area of interest. To clip out our area of interest, you can uh, go to view. From view, there is your uh, processing tool or you can go to analysis and you can select within uh, analysis, there is tools. There are different alternative ways how to go to, to our uh, area of interest. So. You can click tool and uh, you can write here uh, from the find tool extract by mask or you can go to uh, toolbox from toolbox there are different available options of tool sets scroll down and go to uh, spatial analysis tool here there is spatial analysis expand here and from the available option i would like to uh, stretch uh, extraction from extraction uh, let's select extract by mask tool, double click and open the tool. Here there is input raster. Input raster is the larger data set that we have. In our case, digital elevation with 20 meters spatial resolution. So select here, 
in 20 meter input thruster or feature mask data the mask layer is our area of interest in our case the administrative boundary of Worada. so let's select here and select Worada boundary or this uh, administrative boundary other important parameter that we have set here is output raster this is uh, the folder that we want to save our output so you can select and go to uh, your working directory and you can save uh, in my case let me um, put uh, by default analysis uh, extent should be you can leave by default as specified below or you can select the Warada boundary so uh, you can leave uh, as default and finally run so extract team is uh, automatically generated within a fraction of minute based based on your uh, your computational capacity of your computer so i have extracted my digital elevation model from the larger data set and i would like to eliminate the larger data set because my uh, intention is work with my area of interest so let's explore our uh, data set uh, here this is our digital elevation model for uh, our steady area for better visualization you can uh, change your symbology to convert your symbology right click as i have mentioned earlier uh, go to symbology and uh, this is a stretch uh, you can simply convert the color scale based on your color preference in my case i would like to use this one so this is the digital division model this uh, area indicates that the digital division model of uh, our steady area so uh, let's visualize the minimum and the maximum value of uh, the elevation of my steady area go to uh, here so the minimum elevation in my steady area is 947 with a color of green area so the southern tip or the south uh, western part of this administrative unit with a green color is uh, the lower elevation and the red one indicates that the maximum elevation with elevation of 2897 meter above sea level so this is uh, the general uh, description of elevation so the next step that we are going to do for landslide susceptibility mapping is we need to reclassify this elevation based on our threshold so let's have a look at the threshold so elevation which lay between 0 to 500 meters have very low susceptibility for landslide because if uh, any geographic area is flat uh, uh, by default this is not susceptible for landslide where elevation increase when the slope of an area is increasing the probability of occurrence of landslide becomes maximum or very high so this threshold number indicates that the probability of the occurrence of landslide according to yellow and in two thousand and five, and this is the threshold that we have. So, based on this threshold, we need to reclassify our values. So, to reclassify our data set, what we are going to do is get back to the geoprocessing tool, or you can select a toolbox, and uh, to reclassify, go to a spatial analysis tool and select the reclassify tool set expand here and there is a tool called reclassify double click here and we need to reclassify our data set so input raster is uh, our digital elevation model but before that we need to have fill our digital elevation model if there is any defect let's uh, let uh, me show you how to fill our data set so go to toolbox and we have here hydrology from hydrology there is field let me fill uh, the data set the input surface raster as 
digital eviction model that we have extracted from the larger data set the output surface raster is the folder that we are working on to save our output so uh, the uh, file name is peel extracted or let's rename as peel in and hit run and we compare and contrast to the field dim and the original dim that we are clipped out from the original data set if the value is different from uh, the original one there is a uh, correction so the original one the minimum elevation was 947 and the field one is 952 and the maximum value is 2897 and uh, edited one or the field name is 2897 so there was uh, some kinds of defect so we need to use for further uh, processing the field name so uh, let's reclassify to gain our elevation so uh, this is the tool from tool let me reclassify from reclassify the input raster is the dim that we have filled or corrected. The reclass field is a value, the uh, value of a raster data set, and we need to reclassify based on our threshold that uh, we have on our table. So our uh, threshold is five in number, uh, so the number of uh, class should be five, but we need to consider the elevation that we have on the television model if we have the elevation between 0 and 500 we consider uh, this class unless and otherwise we remove out from our threshold so in our case the minimum value is 9952 and the maximum is 3897 so we don't have uh, the value between 0 to 500 so the number of class uh, should be 4 then let's reclassify the number of classes that we have uh, based on our digital elevation model is 4 because we do not have uh, the raster value between 0 to 500 so the minimum value is 900, uh, 952, so 952 falls between 500 to 1000, 1000. so the maximum value is 1000. Let's uh, have 1000, the next uh, threshold is 1500. 1500 then the next one is 2000 and above 2000 then let's see it okay so i do have uh, four classes the class one is from 952 to 1000 from 1000 to 1500 from 1500 to 2000 from 2000 to the maximum value so we do have a four value one indicators in our case is low because the number is lay between 500 to 1000 so low susceptibility medium susceptibility high susceptibility and very high susceptibility in terms of elevation value of kokosha warada in ethiopia so you can rename this based on your reference. In my case, elevation reclass is my name, elevation reclass. So hit run automatically reclassified data sets will uh, available so as this color indicates that this uh, color indicates very low landslide susceptibility in terms of elevation indicates that medium susceptibility 
this area, the low-laying areas, which is found in the southwestern part of the Warada, in the northern uh, parts of uh, Warada, with the color of this, have low susceptibility in terms of elevation. Three and four have very high and very high susceptibility for uh, landslide based on the elevation class. So uh, let me open this open attribute table. Then we can add the value. So this is attribute table, and let's add new field. Click add. Here the field name is class and the data type for class is text because we need to write uh, the minimum, uh, low, very low, high, medium and very high susceptibility. So uh, the data type that we want to create is text. So I uh, have uh, selected the text and save here and get back to the main attribute table so the class is automatically generated in our case one is low landslide susceptibility low two is medium medium and the third one is high and the final one is very high very high finally let's get back to this and uh, you can double click and so right click here then select symbology from symbology there is a new unique value uh, but field is let me select class based on the available classes or threshold high low medium and very high let me select this and right click move to bottom so based on this class you can also select your color scheme based on your color preference in my case as usual let me uh, select this one so uh, the green one indicates that the area with uh, very low susceptibility for landslide in this case this area is very low uh, susceptibility in terms of elevation whereas the red one indicates that very high susceptible for landslide in terms of elevation this is all about today's video if you have any question related to this let me know uh,